YouTube, it's Tuesday, and you guys know what that means? It's Tier List Tuesday. Let's go. Welcome back to the YouTube channel, guys. If you guys haven't been here for a Tier List Tuesday, I post a Tier List every single Tuesday, and they're 99% of the time Call of Duty related. This week, we are doing ARs, and ARs are in a very interesting spot. Right now, ARs, there's some that are very overtuned, and then there's some that are very bad. There's a lot in the middle ground as well, so we have a lot to talk about, and so I wanted to bring someone in today, my boy Sam. If you guys have been to the live streams before over on Twitch or YouTube, you guys have seen Sam before. We play just about every single night together, and Sam's like a 1.5 KD, I want to say ish he might be a little bit higher than that and then i'm like a 2.5 kd so we get a little bit different views on these guns it's great i'm gonna be really excited to hear like what he has to say and what i have to say and then we're probably gonna banter a little because he's literally one of my best friends in the entire world so let's jump on to do it guys i cannot wait to jump right into it if you guys are new here make sure you guys do like the video subscribe to the channel and comment below let's go all right youtube we're gonna jump right into it here we got sam here on the line sam say what up hi youtube all righty, we got Sam here, and we're just going to go right in order. This list actually has them labeled all out for us and then has them in alphabetical order. So we're just going in alphabetical order here because I think it's a pretty good balance. But first, we have the AK-47 Cold War. Well, I'm going to give you guys my opinion, and then Sam will give me his, and then we're going to kind of figure out where it really belongs. So my opinion right now, the AK-47 for Cold War is probably A tier. I think it's A tier because at range, it's pretty good. It has a little bit of a weird recoil, but up close, it can still be used as like a secondary. So it's not like, it's pretty good in both areas. So at range, it, the headshot multiplier on this gun is just stupid. So if you guys ever have tried breaking this out yet, I'm gonna have a video on the long range one soon. I have, I've done ones in the past on the secondary option of it, but I think the AK-47 Cold War is very solid right now. I agree. I would probably put it, B tier if we were just going long range because the rate of fire does slow it down a little bit. Once you get into that mid tier, mid range or the, the short range, it just destroys people. So I'll give it a good A tier as well. Yeah, I think that's fire because like realistically, like B, it could be B tier for long range, but like medium range, it's S tier. Like it is insane at medium range. The AK in Modern Warfare, this thing is going straight C tier for me. Like this thing has never been good. It's kind of a disappointing gun in my opinion because and Modern Warfare came out, it was just not good at any point in, mo in multiplayer or in Warzone. It's just never been good. It's been a meme on my channel where people were trying to tell me for a long time that it was good, and I was just kept trying it, and it was never good. So I think this could be a gun that might actually get some buffs if they're going to keep continuing to buff Modern Warfare weapons. Yeah, in my opinion, I'll put it anything below D tier. I think it's unusable at range, just bounces all over the map, and then short range is just way too slow. So you think so it's even D? Tier, D? I think it's I think I think it's one of the worst modern warfare ARs. Alright, I I'm so I'm in with that. I, I I agree it is probably a D tier if we're gonna go all the way down to D today. I agree. The A Max for me is still oh, this is a tough one. I mean Sam is a perfect category on this one because Sam always hated the AMX. He's never liked the recoil pattern on it. It's never been a gun for him. But for me, it's been S tier for a long time. I think right now it's A tier, but it's going to push in the S tier once they nerf some of these other guns that we'll talk about or they're just overtuned right now. So, yeah. Yep, so I was probably one of the rare ones that did not use the AMX too much. I did respect its power, though, before the nerf. Um, AMX was definitely the best gun in the game for a long time. I have used it a few times post nerf, um, and now with you know the all it's all colder weapons are on the rise. I think it's probably a B tier weapon. I think it's solid, um, but if we're putting the AK Cold War as A tier, I think the AMX should be there with it because I think those two guns are very similar at range and medium. So. Yeah, they have really similar recoil patterns, sort of, and like time to kill. I'm pretty similar. They're like like right on with each other. Pretty sure of that. The AN ninety four. Honestly, the most disappointing gun in Modern Warfare, if you ask me, because they added it in. If you guys didn't know, the AN-94 was a Black Ops 2 weapon, which was absolutely just broken. It had the same hyper burst where the first two bullets shoot out at the same time and just do incredible damage if you hit a headshot. But if you do not hit a headshot with this gun right off the bat with those, this is one of the slowest time to kills in the game. I would probably put it at C tier. It has like no recoil like at all, which almost none of these weapons in this game have recoil in general. Like warzone or modern warfare or cold war very minimal recoil on all their weapons but time to kill is just way too slow for me on the an 
Yeah, I agree. I think C tier is a good spot for it. I don't really think there's ever a purpose or a reason to use it. There's so many better guns, but compared to the AK-47 Modern Warfare, it, it does do better at short or mid-range, so it's definitely better than that, so I think C tier yeah, is a Yeah, and it, it has no recoil on it, so it's technically easy to use. The AS Val. <laughs> this isn't really an AR, guys. I mean, this is truly an SMG. So to me, I'm going to put it in an A tier, but we're going to rank it as an SMG because I think it is very good. But you cannot use it past like solos or duos. If you try to use it in quads, like you're just stuck in an awkward spots where if you play with your team and you're playing a little bit slower, like you can probably get away with this. But if you're like me and I throw myself into 1v4 situations a lot for no reason because I'm an idiot, this is just not going to be for you. You're going to run out of ammo. It's really fun to use in Rebirth if you guys like playing Rebirth, though. Fastest time to kill in the game, right there with the nail gun, and they're both in the same situation. But as a secondary weapon, it's an A tier. Long range AR, it's actually not even an idea. So, yeah, I would agree. It's just, I think it's unusable long range, and you only have 30 bullets, like you said. Even if you're playing quads or trios, and you're even short range, you're probably only getting one or two max. So yeah, because you have I to assume everyone. You have to assume yeah, everyone has it... self-revive at this point. So you're by the time you're finishing these people, you're out of ammo. Yep. I would probably put a B tier just because of its lack of versatility. But I think A tier is not a bad spot because, like I said, once it's close range, it's the fastest time to kill in the game. It, it beats every SMG as long as you have a, a quick ADS on it. So A tier is a good spot, I think, just for its SMG use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The C58 right now is S tier, 150%. They just nerfed this gun for the first time. If you guys haven't leveled it up or used it yet, because not a ton of people are using it right now. There's a few streamers that are starting to use it, and I think we're going to see more and more of them as we see an obvious foreign nerf coming in probably in the next patch. Um, the C58 is... It hits like cinder blocks, guys. Like You're getting just punched in the face when you're getting shot with this gun. It's like the original AMAX, in that situ in that spot where like the AMAX was the gun. But the C fifty eight, ooh. C fifty eight is just really good right now, guys. It hits so hard. The fire rate is a little clunky, but they nerfed it on the recoil and there's st it still feels literally the same to me. So I don't know what they did to it, but it feels exactly the same. Yeah, I agree. I think and you will talk about it later in the video. I think this along with another two are probably with the best guns in the game right now. And some people in the chat might disagree just because like you said, it does have a more of a funky recoil pattern where compared to some of the guns we'll discuss later, don't have any rec recoil at all. But like you said, it takes two bullets and you've already full cracked a person. And then a few after that, um, you might get in trouble with it if you're running around with it close range, but long range to medium range, it's I don't think it can be beat right now. Yeah, and that's something I actually disagree with, Sam. The C58 in like short, medium range, it hits so hard that it actually doesn't feel that bad because you put the three time scope on it and it doesn't actually zoom in that much. So you can actually survive with it. It's one of the rare ARs that I've kind of found like kind of comfortable with in like a medium to short range. Like it kind of falls into that AK category for me because it hits so hard. But I can see what he's saying. Yeah, it is true. I mean, I my preference is to a sniper primary. So, like as a secondary, the C58 is good, but for clearing close quarters and buildings and the ADS speed might just be a little too slow compared to like an SMG or a yeah. AS foul type of gun. I'm interested to see if we'll ever see that go as a secondary just because it hits so hard, but I don't think it will. You could maybe I'll mess around with the secondary build, but I don't think it's really meant for that. All right, guys, the foul people on my channel, Mac specifically Zerk literally tries to tell me that this is one of the best guns in the game. It's not that good at range. Like it's a solid B tier. Like it does what you need it to do for a semi-automatic, but it's nowhere near what like the DMR, or the Type 63 were at one point where you're just like two tapping people or three tapping people across the map. This gun, I think if you hit someone, it's like a three tap, but it just doesn't feel as smooth. The fire rate's really fast. So like you have to like, if you're on a mouse and keyboard like I play, you almost have to like control the fire rate on it because you shoot it so fast. The most broken we ever saw the foul was when it was a secondary, which was just busted out of its mind but ever since then with a couple nerfs it just it's never really found its way in it could arguably be a c tier on this as well but i think it is decent enough as a semi-auto to fall into b yeah i agree i mean we're a long ways away from when the foul was the most broken gun in the game and that's a, probably a year that, now ever, easily ever since that got nerfed I, I haven't i've maybe gotten killed by the foul once or twice since it's been in the meta yeah so um, no one's running it i just think only cheaters rate, i mean it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it obviously hits really hard in close range. It can be viable, but once you get to 60 meters or above, like you're not killing anything. So I think B tier is a solid spot just because it can crack people in two bullets close range, but 
you can't kill anyone on range. Yeah, it's it's good medium range, but long, long range, I don't like it. But I have been killed by a hacker, and like it was the one of the most ridiculous hackers I've ever seen using this gun. So technically, if you hit all headshots, it still can be cracked. But I don't know. B tier for sure. Far 83 is is the best gun in the game right now. Like it is zero recoil. The extremity damage is ridiculous. Like there's sometimes where people are just shooting me. I'm like, oh, this guy must have hit all headshots. He hit, he shot me in the legs, and I got got absolutely beamed. So this gun, there's not a whole lot to talk about. Zero recoil, crazy damage. Luckily, when it was a secondary, they nerfed the head and neck multiplier on it, so headshots are not like it doesn't do extreme amount of damage, but the fire rate's so high that it basically just beams you no matter what. So best gun in the game right now yep i don't think there's too much to talk about it's like i said it does not move if you have the right build on it um it doesn't do as much damage obviously as the c58 but i mean there's zero recoil and it shoots faster so you kill someone easily just as fast um yeah it, i don't know if we're gonna find a gun on this list that's better than this one right now and i think that's pretty obvious yeah absolute beast the far <sighs> far, far far ffar whatever you want to call it this thing ran warzone for since cold war came out and they finally got it in a good spot right now it is arguably like right in the middle of a and b tier right now but it's a secondary like it is forever a secondary there was a time where it was so broken that people were running it as an ar with like a mac 10 when they were both broken at the same time but that was for people that were just pushing every single fight and like trying to set world records like i think i saw huskers set a world record with it using a main ar but if you try to use it as a main ar now it just doesn't feel very good and as a secondary i think there's a lot better options since they buffed so many smgs so i'm gonna leave it at b tier for the time being yeah i agree for someone i use the far primarily for months and months in this game and i've i tried i didn't want to let go of it so i try to use it after the after the nerf but you run into the issue with the far if you put the long barrel on for range then you're just too slow for close quarters and if you put the short barrel on for close quarters then you're just all over the place for long range so it's kind of hard and there's really no point to use it right now so but it, it still does good damage so i think b tier is a b tier is okay for it yeah at this point i don't think long range is even an option i think you could maybe get away with it at short range but it's still not like they yeah, buffed SMGs so much. Perfect. Yeah, they buffed SMGs so much at this point that it's just, there's not much. The FR-5556, Jay God tried to troll everyone in the world and tell you guys that that gun was good. I don't know how that v video ever did great and got a million, I think it probably hit a million views by the time it finished, but it's not good, guys. Like, literally, people use this gun if you want to troll. I mean, it's not good. It does okay, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see a buff on this. They do, like... They're three bursts from the AUG and M16 meta, but these two guns right here, like, if it's in D tier, I'm expecting them to do some kind of buff because I hated the Bison, and they buffed the Bison, like I talked about in last week's tier this Tuesday, and it feels really good now. So I'm expecting some of these lower rank guns, like, especially the AN94 where they added it into the game, especially, like, they're just going to probably get a buff at some point, in my opinion, but this thing is D tier for the time being. Yeah, I think it's... I think it's the worst gun we've talked about so far, and we won't talk about them here because they're tactical rifles, but there's never a reason to use this over the Type 93 or the DMR or even the AUG. So yeah. if you want a three burst, that's your favorite, then you have a lot better options than the FR. Yeah, that thing, the FR sucks. So don't use it. They might buff it at some point, but the fire rate's weird on it, so they're just going to purely buff damage on it, and if you don't hit your shots, it's, it's a weird gun. Don't like it at all. The Growl. The Growl right now is one of those guns where I, I feel like I put it in a different spot every single season when I rank it, and they don't ever touch it. But they keep changing other weapons around it, and in my opinion right now, I think the Growl is more of a B-tier weapon. In the past, it's been like an A-tier and even S-tier at times, but everyone knows about the Growl meta. That was over a year ago now where this gun was just broken out of its mind. It's probably exactly a year ago right now. But this gun is just average the time to kill and it's pretty slow compared to other guns now we're kind of everyone seeing that the cold war weapons are kind of just slowly taking over the mw weapons so at this point i think it's a b tier weapon yeah you might be surprised to hear me say this because you know how much i like the growl but i think it's trash right now um i would probably put it in a c tier i i used this a few games or a few days ago and you just can't really kill anything with it. It bounces too much, and it seems like the, the barrel that used to be on it that had no recoil now has recoil all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. um, the time, especially, it just feels like the time to kill once you've cracked someone's plates is just crazy long to finish a kill. Um, I would put it in C tier, but 
it, it can be used. So it's, I would definitely choose it over the AN94. What I'm very so. interested in, the Growl could come back to meta if they do what they say they're going to do. They're talking about raising the time to kill on guns in general and making it longer for people to kill. If they don't touch the Growl and they nerf all these other guns, the Growl easily could find its way back in the meta. So... I'm going to leave that B for the time being on my list here, but I think Sam's right. It can easily fall into C right now. And also, if, if that is the case, it could go back to meta just because also it has, in my opinion, the best iron sights in Call of Duty history. So Yeah, awesome iron sights. And it works if you put the uh, scopes Three on it as well. Times. Three times works. I put the blue dot on it before for videos. Both are pretty solid. The Groza, another one of those far weapons where this thing's horrible at range. It's an, it's truly made to be like an SMG. It's actually really good right now. I'm going to put it at B tier. It would be A tier if they could fix the glitch with the gun. The iron sights on the gun shoot slightly to the left. They don't shoot directly down the middle like they're supposed to. So if this gun was... The statist statistically, this gun is ridiculous. Like, it is so good. And sometimes when you use it, you're like, I just absolutely destroyed someone. But... Consistency wise, I don't like the fact that the iron sights messed up. You need to put to be more consistent. You have to put a red dot or something on it. And I just don't like any of the attachments on it, to be honest. So I'm going to put it at B tier for the time being. Yeah, I mean, I'll have to agree with you. My experience with the Groza is probably limited to ground loot only. I don't think I've ever loaded up a loadout with the Groza on it. Mm -hmm. So I, I do know when I pick it up in ground loot, if I'm running around TV station or Superstore, it, it comes in handy and it's something that I don't necessarily not look forward to seeing on grand loop but yeah it, like I said, it's only good at short range and i think the far or the as foul is way better than it so that's fair definitely i think it is a good ground loop weapon but for the most part it's b tier the kilo i would probably ugh, this is a weird one right now because it's kind of the same situation with the growl but i think the kilo is slightly better than the growl so i'll put it a tier for the time being but it has no recoil. The recoil pattern has never been touched. It has it's basically up and down, so it's easy to hit headshots with it. But they did nerf the damage at range at one point, and then they bring guns in like the FAR and the C58. So it's like, what are you supposed to compare these two? Like realistically, it's an easy gun to use, and it does slightly more damage, a faster time to kill than the Growl. So in my opinion, it goes A. It's an easy gun to use. It's a very friendly weapon for people. Yep, I agree. I think it's similar to the Growl. I think from using the these two recently, I think the Kilo just naturally, whatever barrel has on it, it recoils easier to control than the Growl right now. Um, but like you said, just the, the, the time to kill and the damage drop off is pretty significant at range, so it might feel like a while to kill someone. Uh, me personally, I would probably put this like number one on the B tier. Um, just because I think the Amax and the Cold War AK just do so much more damage than the Kilo. That's fair. But there is people that do like it because it doesn't have much recoil, and they've been using it for a while when it was back in meta. So I think top of B tier, low A tier is an okay spot for it. Yeah, I think that you really can't go wrong with this weapon. And the headshot multiplier is still pretty high on it, especially in like medium range. So it's solid. Definitely A tier. Mm -hmm. But if they don't nerf this gun, like as you said at the growl when they lower the time to kill on some of these other weapons it might be top meta again so be interesting to see what ends up happening because no one knows what they're going to do because they won't even put an anti-cheat in the game so we'll see the krig 6 right now this is probably s tier it's probably a top three weapon in the game i'd probably put it in this exact order i'd put far c58 in my opinion i think the c58 is better for my play style than the far but like as an overall community like most people are using the far c58 and then the krig the krig on honestly is like the perfect balanced overpowered weapon right now but i do think it is that s tier currently yeah i think there's really not too much difference in the far and the krig if you like went back to back games using each of them you probably wouldn't tell too much difference i think the krig is maybe one bullet slower than the far for a kill the krig has um, higher damage when you shoot neck and head like that's the only time it's going to be better yep and like i said i think the craig just might be a tad bit slower um but i i've used the craig a good amount and sometimes i like it more than the fara just because like you said it, at range it seems like it can get a little more damage than the fara um so I, I definitely think it's s tier and i think the order of s tier right now is good i think the c58 i would probably choose that over it but the craig is a solid option right now yeah, I mean, if you shoot body shots with the Krig, it feels a little weird because the fire rate isn't as high as the Farah, but overall, like I said before, like neck and head damage, like if you sneak a couple of those in there, it's one of the highest multipliers in the game, so can't really go wrong on it. The M13, this is my baby chat. I use, This was my first like love in this game. Like It was the M4 and this gun. Like, ugh. Love this gun, but 
Like, there's literally one person in the world that makes this gun, like, S tier, and that's Cloaksy, because his aim's ridiculous. But, in my opinion, I think it's, like, a B tier weapon. Like, at the end of the day, like, it falls in the same situation as the Growl now, where there's absolutely no recoil on the weapon, but the time to kill just takes way too long. If you're in, like, a medium range fight, and you hit, like, all upper body, you're sneaking a couple headshots in there, you melt people. But, you know how this game is, guys. Like, if you're shooting at medium to long range, you're not really like killing people fast like people running around like tracking people if you don't track perfectly with the m13 you're not killing people and so i'm gonna throw it at b tier i think it's kind of similar to the an94 but i think the an94 like the fire rate and the hyper burst are so different that i think the b it, b tier is perfect for the m13 in my opinion yeah i agree i mean it, like if you want a no recoil gun that shoots a lot of bullets fast just use the fara <laughs> yeah I mean, exactly we've kind of me and rick have mentioned before that we think modern warfare weapons are eventually going to start phased out and either by just extremely bad nerfs or they'll eventually just take them out of the game so i think the fara is it's maybe one tick slower than the m13 like as far as fire rate but there's never like at this point in the game there's no reason to use the m13 over the fara nope um, the fara is better in every way so yeah, you should never touch them 13 right now unless like you're cloaksy and just like is in love with that gun forever. So for the average human being and good player, you're gonna lose most gunfights using the M13 currently just because the far is better. And yeah, M13 has always been very bad at close range, even when it was hanging around the meta back when the kilo was around, you could use them 13 and compete, but close range, you're just not gonna get anything done with M13. Yeah, no, realistically it's a medium range weapon. The M4A1. The Swiss Army knife, as I've always called it on this channel, it was it's so good at like medium and short range, and it does pretty decent at long range as well. <sighs> it's really slept on, honestly. It's a tough one. It is a tough one. I would, I like it, you said, it's, it's a Swiss Army knife. I don't think it's ever been terrible. Mm -hmm. I would probably put it a tier above the kilo. Um, I think it does more damage than the kilo, and I mm -hmm. think it's also a lot better than the kilo ground up thirteen at closer ranges. So. I agree, and with the Kilo, you could not really use the Iron Sight on that gun. You can still rock an M4A1 with the Iron Sight and get away with it. So, you can use it with the three times or the Iron Sight, and honestly, you can survive, but it's definitely a viable weapon. It's a, I always tell people that, like, that come into my stream, the M4A1 is the perfect weapon for a new player. It does everything you want it to do. It hits short range well, it does medium range great, and it does long range pretty well. So... I've tested out both iron sight builds and three time scope builds or the VLK scopes and if they still work in this season. So I would definitely give it an A tier and it is literally the best fully loaded weapon. If you don't use that fully loaded with the M4, like you're kind of just missing out. Yeah, I agree. I mean, like you said, it's always been good in Modern Warfare. They really haven't touched it since like the first season or so. Yeah, because it's uh, broken. A people, yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people have slept on it this entire past since Warzones came out. You know, after the meta ended with it, People don't really use it that much, but like you said, it's probably one of the most consistent guns in the game. You know exactly what you're going to get with it, so it, I think it's been an A tier for almost an entire year. Very solid. The Odin. So the Odin was probably my first love in Warzone because you could shoot people like three bullets and kill them. Um, but at the same time, the M4 was broken, and like it's just... It's very average, guys, at the end of the day. It hits like a freaking truck. If it had a bigger magazine, I think we could push it into B. But since it has like a 30 round magazine, and I've seen people like Super Evan drop 55 kills with it like a year ago, but it's just, it's missing something, guys. Like it needs the extra mag, like it does enough damage. It's fine at range, honestly, but it's easy to miss shots with the awkward fire rate and the damage, it's there, but I don't think it's enough to overpower a 30 round mag with an awkward fire rate. Yeah, I, I love the idea of the Odin, which is kind of this big bruising gun that does a lot of damage. But with the current meta, with how fast the the Farah and the Krig and the C58 shoot and kill, like it just you you can't compete, especially at range. That's one of the big the Odin's biggest problems is the recoil is not crazy hard to control. But once you get towards range, and it's just such a big gun that sometimes the gun just gets in your your sight, you can't really see anything. The Colossus so, suppressor. Uh, Yep, exactly. Sometimes it just gets a little clunky. Um, it does kill people in three or four bullets, but a lot of times before you can get that third bullet off, you're dead from a Fara or, you know, an M4 just because it shoots faster. It's just consistently, it's not there. The QBZ. This is another gun where they've done some interesting things with it, where it was really, honestly, one of my favorite weapons in, modern, or like in Cold War multiplayer. 
But when it transferred over, it transferred over like a completely different weapon. It feels so much different from Cold War to uh, Warzone. And I would personally put it at C tier. Like they buffed it to have movement speed when like we had the FAR as a secondary, we had the AK as a secondary, like as a, the FAR, the FFAR as a secondary, like it was buffed to like give it movement speed. But it never buffed the damage on it, which the damage, it's a low, but like it's consistent, but like it it's it's in an awkward spot right now. Like you're not gonna use it ever as a secondary compared to an SMG, and you're never gonna use it as a long range AR, which some people tried to use it as originally. Like I saw Huskers run it a little bit, but it's really just like an M13 with less damage. So it's like it's weird. It's in a bad spot. Yeah, I would agree. It's kind of a it's an awkward gun right now. I don't have too much experience. It's kind of like the Groza where I, I've only used it in ground loot. And like I said, it's not a terrible ground loot if you just need to get mm -hmm. a couple kills like off the drop. But it it's not good at long range, and it's also not good at short range. And medium range, there's really no point to use it. So it doesn't kill fast it. enough at medium range either. No, it, it, it reminds me of the AN94 where it's like you can kill people with it, but like it just you're going to have a lot of disadvantages to it. So I would probably put it like top of C tier. I think that's a good spot for it. Yeah, I, I you could even argue a D tier, but at this point, like these weapons are just horrible. So yeah, I think the <laughs> D tier weapons compared to the C tier weapons are just a big difference. So yeah, <laughs> I keep D tier for the trash. Mm -hmm. The Ram 7. This is a gun that I've always loved. I just don't use it a ton because for some reason, I just, I just don't like those weapons that are just like complete bullet hogs. And but when I use it, it feels like an S tier weapon to me. Like I have very good aim. And so you'll see people like Tifu and Symphony and uh, these guys have really good aim. This is like their main weapon. And I'm personally going to put it in S tier for the time being because the time to kill on it's very good. But you have to have really good aim. Like, realistically, it's probably an A tier for most people. For most people, it's probably an A tier where you need to hit your shots. It's better than the ground. It's better than M13 damage-wise. Has slightly more recoil. Like, people like to call this gun a mouse and keyboard gun. Like, I've seen Nick Merckx call it that. I've seen other couple other people that use controller. They'll never use it on a controller in a competitive environment. But... I've seen some people absolutely beam with it. I've absolutely beamed with it. Sometimes I kill people with this gun and I'm like, how the heck did they die so fast? So I'm going to leave it in S tier for the time being. It could arguably be A tier though. Yeah, I think I ran the RAM for a few weeks as kind of a secondary for a sniper for that mid range to short range. And it, like you said, it just, there's some of the things, some people you kill and you're just like, how did that person die so fast? Um, I think it's a much better M13 because the fire rates are pretty similar. Mm -hmm. um, it just does so much more damage. So I think the one of the only downsides to the RAM in this meta right now where we have it with the S-tier guns is at range. I mean, you can put it three times on the RAM and it, it, it would be viable and you can make it work. Um, but like you said, I think you're going to run out of bullets much quicker and the recoil patterns just can't compare to the Krig or the Farah. So I'll yeah. probably put a top A tier because I just think it's a lot different than the, the three guns that we have in S-tier. But mid-range to close range it's still just it destroys people totally and completely like agree said, it's, it's been slept on it I'm, I'm actually surprised how many people i do not see use the ram over the past few months yeah right now it, it honestly might be the best sniper support weapon right now because they've changed so many things around like i like the cold war ak as a secondary for sniper right now but honestly the ram's probably more consistent so i might actually I switch that out a little bit mm-hmm the scar the scar 17 an og call of duty weapon that's been around for years and years we all know it hasn't been very good and warzone it got buffed it wasn't good in modern warfare either first off and then in, in warzone it wasn't good it got buffed recently and honestly it feels really good where it's at right now like it could easily be an a tier weapon but it's gonna fall c tier for me all day because it has a too small of a mag it's another gun that has a 30 round mag like the odin and the scar both have the same round mag but the odin hits like two times harder and the scar has like a great fire rate good iron sight everything's good about the scar except for i lost train of thought the 30 bullets 30 bullets 30 bullets there yeah, we go <laughs> the, the 30, and i i agree i i'm actually going to say the scar is a d tier yeah have you used it recently it's pretty I, solid after the buff I, I I haven't used it since the buff, so I'll have to give it another try. But I just remember, hopefully they fix it. That you can't use the scar at range, um, even if you put like a three times on it, because one you have thirty bullets. Um, yep. Everyone knows that most people run sixty round mags, and that's that's plenty enough to maybe get one or two people at like a hundred to two hundred meter range. But with the scar, you're just bouncing all over the place. The recoil is kind of hard to control. 
um, short to close range and mid range that has a ton of damage. It's kind of like the uh, like the far used to be, or even like the Odin damage, where just it cracks someone in two bullets, but mm-hmm. it's slow. So, and you you need to hit a headshot if you want to kill someone before they kill you with an SMG. So I think low C tier or D tier is fine for it. I, like, there's really no reason to use it. If though. you give it a a bigger mag, though, it could probably push it into B for sure. If you gave it a 45 round mag like the A Max and reduce the recoil just a tad bit, I think it could be like the next A Max and it could be very viable. Yeah. But I don't think they're, I mean, they haven't ever added a magazine, so I don't think they're going to do the that. C50, the C58 kind of reminds me of a better scar. Yeah. Just and for how hard it hits. The fire rate's kind of similar. The fire rate's a little similar. The C58's a, C58's a little faster, but I think that's what they were, they wanted for the scar. Yeah. That's a good call. The XM4, guys, as anyone knows, I've called it end of season two. I said this was going to be the meta in season three. It ended up being the meta in season three, and it got buffed going into season four, but it also got nerfed at the same time because they changed all the barrels. And so in my opinion right now, I think the XM4 is actually A tier, which is very surprising. I thought for sure it'd be S tier. A lot of people are trying to make it work as a long range weapon right now. I just don't think it feels good. Like I have tried this thing last season as long range. I tried it this season as long range, and it just doesn't feel good in long range for me but up close it's still very good it still has a very t- fast time to kill and like headshot multiplier and it's nuts if you haven't used it on a controller before aim assist is crazy on this weapon but it just doesn't feel as good this season when they nerfed the task force barrel and now you pretty much run a no barrel on it for short range and it just you slightly don't have the range you want on it but if you're up close and personal with someone in a building like it's still really good but the SMGs are just as good, if not better, at that range now. So it's like, it's in an awkward spot. It's still a very good weapon, but it's not OP like it used to be. Yeah, I might be a little biased in this because I've been using this. Gun Sam uses this a lot. I've been using this as past two months or so I because I primarily use the car 98 and this is my, my my secondary with it. I personally would put this as like the third or fourth gun in the S tier. Um, I don't use it at range, and I know Rick and I tried it at range a few games ago, and the recoil was very strange on it. It was kind of hard to tell, and it bounced a ton. Um, and I use it a little differently than a lot of people you might see. I don't put any iron, or I, I don't put any red dots. I use it iron sights, and I use it for the mid range. Um, it, it definitely has its downsides. I mean, the iron sights are kind of clunky on it, but the damage that you can get mid to close range is comparable to a lot of like an AS Val sometimes, or even like an SMG. Um, and it's one of the probably the quickest AR on this list as far as strafe speed and mm-hmm. movement speed. I think it's the quickest AR where you can go zoom in with it and kill a lot of people. So I think it's an S tier gun, but I might be a little biased in that opinion. Yeah, it's definitely a solid gun. And like you, he did bring up a good point. Movement wise, this gun's pretty nuts compared to some of the other ones because all the other ones that were secondaries got nerfed on their movement at one point. The XM4 never got touched on it. So the Raider pad's still really strong on it. But mm-hmm. that's yeah, going to fly with this gun. Yeah, for sure. But that's going to be it today, guys. I appreciate you, Sam, for stopping in and giving another opinion on all this. Um, lot- yep, of course. Lots of good things coming to the channel, guys. If you guys are new here, make sure you guys do drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel and comment below what you guys thought about the tier list or what you guys would have changed on the tier list. Because I know you guys will have some bold opinions, especially probably the AK-47 from Modern Warfare. But appreciate you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day and peace out.